Welcome to another episode of Blooms for You. Thank you so much for being here. Dendrobium hibiki in the late afternoon Spanish sun. What's not to like about that? <laughs> This Blooms For You series gives me the opportunity to get to my list of people that I have seen in comments, including everybody that has subscribed that is not a private account, and I can see the names in the back end of YouTube. I go there regularly to see if there's anything new I need to add to my list. My Blooms For You list, we are now, if you would like to have an orientation based on when you've subscribed and you think that I have forgotten you. If I can see you, I have not forgotten you, but we are now into March of 2022. So if you commented or subscribed before that and have not been mentioned yet, it is possibly that you will be mentioned in this episode or the next episode as blooms come and go. And film a dedication because unfortunately the past four weeks I did miss out on some blooms. I didn't film them on time to dedicate them, which really irks me, but we did see all the blooms when it comes to Orchid Chores Diary videos. But... I have some gems, I had some gems open up and I look forward to sharing them with you. For everybody that is not mentioned in this episode today, <laughs> hey, we're back with Dendrobium Hibiki because la la, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And Dendrobium Hibiki blooms for all of you watching this video today, tomorrow, in six months time or whenever to say thank you to you for being here, for supporting the channel and for your time. Right, let's go and have a look-see whose names came up this time around. This makes me so happy! <laughs> oh my goodness! This is Vanda Rainbow Forest. No, it's not, but it is what's on her tag. Whatever it is, I can tell you, this is beautiful! I have 12 spikes on my orchid this year. We have upped the ante from last year when I had 9 spike, which was pretty amazing. But greedy orchid grower that I am, give me three more spikes the following year and <laughs> yeah, let's blow my flip-flops off one more time. And there's something else, of course, that brings me great pleasure. And that is to say thank you to Pilaut Sanctorayan, Crystal Clark, Simone Teubich, Linda Bontrager, Nuri Online Quran Academy, Alicia Dai, Tara Stu, Claudia Robison, Brian Hart, S. Swarup, B. Ahasan Rosli, Jose Perez, Ana Empredo, Vera Bentley, Spiros L., Rady Ayala, Madison Rumfeld, Mislav B., and Glory and Shine. Glory and shine indeed. Oh, it's a glorious sight and let the sun shine on her for just a little bit longer, just as long as my leaves don't cook. It is late, late afternoon, but I don't have any breeze whatsoever. So she has been a bit nomadic, moving around. And here comes the breeze just in time. Thank you very, very much. After having had some seriously trying days of gale force winds, now it's as if I'm asking for a breeze just so that I can dedicate these blooms to all of you and thank you for your support on my channel without cooking my leaves. So I have two more spikes to open, but I'm going to do this as a general dedication because we do have a lot of names and I could have added probably about 15 more names considering that each spike has approximately 12 blooms on them, but it is a long list. I don't want to bore anybody else that's here to hear about the orchid and get an update on her, but I do want to make sure that everybody that has these blooms dedicated to them knows you are not getting lost in another list. I see you and I appreciate you all individually. Thank you so very, very much. Now what I'm trying to hide, but cannot hide, I have to show you. I put a garbage bag around the base because one of the viewers of my channel, Barbecue and Blues, knows that I've been struggling with humidity and he said, how about putting garbage bags around the roots of your bare root vandas and then maybe you can get a little bit more humidity around them and aren't struggling so hard to keep them hydrated. I will do a separate update video on that though. As you can see, I don't want to lose the light while this orchid is showing her beautiful blooms in the sunshine. And on top of that, in the sunshine, you can appreciate the sparkles of the blooms, not just the deep richness of the color. 
this year I've got a beautiful richness of color that I missed last year because a big factor this year is I have plenty of water and possibly the fact that the roots are getting hydrated because of the garbage bag allowing for more humidity. I haven't increased light levels because this orchid lives outside actually i've been protecting her more and more because as she was growing so much better than she did last year my ambition was not to let her burn so the depth of the color is oh i don't care how this happened it happened i hope to repeat it for next year but probably all the little variables i've just mentioned mixed in produced such a rich rich I used to have a beautiful tropical coral color, which was absolutely amazing. And if I hadn't seen that she can go darker even, I would say, well, she's gorgeous. But to see the richness of these colors this time around, <laughs> ooh, yeah, expectations, expectations. <laughs> Her fragrance is very floral. If she has a neo parent in her, it is possible. The shape of the blooms tells us so. I wouldn't know. At least at this point, the fragrance of the neo falcata is not represented in this fragrance. It is just super floral, not intense considering how many blooms there are. It's not like I can smell her when I'm close up. I really have to put my nose into the blooms to appreciate that fragrance. Can't have it all though. But the following can have her for this year as a thank you. You have it all. Pelaut Sanctorayan, Crystal Clark, Simone Teubich, Linda Bontrager, Nuri Online Quran Academy, Alicia Dai, Tara Stu, Claudia Robeson, Brian Hart, S. Swaroop, B. Ahasan Rosli, Jose Perez, Ana Empredo, Vera Bentley, Spiros L., Rady Ayala, Madison Rumfeld, Mislav B, and Glory and Shine. To each and every one of you, thank you for your support on my channel. I'm super impressed with the blooming of my rainbow forest, but she blooms for you. I hope that you're all doing well in your part of the world. You are so appreciated. It's a first time bloomer, but it's not a first time bloomer, but it is a first time bloomer, my Neo Stylist Lou Sneary. This is a fan that this Neo Stylist grew since it has been with me in my care, and I'm super proud to bring the first little baby fan through to blooming size. So I'm going to take advantage of this spike. And before we do a little cleanup, I want to dedicate these blooms to no tank, no party. Ogi or Ogi, but O-G-G-1-E, and Anaris Condrata. Thank you to the three of you so much for your support of my channel. My first time bloomer, Nia Stylus, Luce Neary, first fan grown in my care after the main fan arrived many, many years ago. Blooms for you. And as mentioned, I am so proud. Now you see that the main fan has already got a spent spike up here and for a moment there I thought I'm gonna be able to interlap and show my loose Neary for the first time with two spikes but then the wind came <laughs> and I'm being kind when I say wind it wasn't wind it was gale force and it was warm and super dry and it blew all the blooms off of my first spike but Thankfully, it didn't frazzle the buds of this one. I'm so happy. <laughs> I was already making concessions in my head with the names that were coming up. And I said, OK, we'll move them down a little bit. But nope. And I've got my vanilla fragrance back during the day. And the beautiful lemon rind citrusy fragrance of the Neo Phoenicia Falcata at night. Love this orchid. Super proud. Now I'm going to turn the orchid around gently just to show you that having achieved one fan, I've got another fan growing in the back here or the front, whichever. And this one is hopefully then going to be mature enough to bloom next year. And given certain conditions, we might have ourselves quite a little basket of fun going on. I'm sorry that I'm putting the orchid at a tilt, but I have a root, of course, going down the basket and underneath. I mean, why not? So I'm just trying to protect that for as long as possible by putting a knife under the basket and tilting it a little bit. So yeah, we've got a little bit of a skew whiff 
looking the basket, but for as long as I can, I'm going to protect the roots, seeing as one of the parents is Rinko Stylus Gigantea and Rinko Stylus and myself here in my dry climate, we don't mesh very well, unfortunately. Every root on this orchid is precious. Needless to say, she's got plenty of roots in the basket, but I said every root and <laughs> I'm quite picky about that. For as long as I remember, for as long as I can, I'm going to try and not bash that root down there. But the blooms, the blooms, the blooms. Oh, hee <laughs> hee. Cannot get enough of the colors. One of my favorite color combinations. And I kid you not, I thought that I knew Neo Stylus new sneery blooms very, very well. But it is the first time I'm noticing that some petals on some of the blooms here are curling backwards in some sort of antelope type shape. Honestly, I have never ever noticed that. Now they are not all doing it. So of course I'm wondering, is this first time blooming? Is this what happens because this fan is a first time bloomer? You see, hypothetically, if I were to detach the fan and then ship it off to somebody, for them it would be a first time blooming Neo Stylus. A very interesting little quirk that I've noticed just today. Once all the blooms had opened, and then I've been looking through the spike also to check and see if there's any deformity. But you know, first time blooming. I've got some sepals that are sticking way up and around the back. The blooms look to be okay, but it seems to have some of those little funky characteristics that aren't necessary. But again, with all the wind that I've had, <laughs> who knows? Maybe it's also environmental. My goodness, it has been a nightmare on my patio, but a nightmare I much prefer because at least it was warm. So once again, a massive thank you to No Tank, No Party, Oggy, and Anaris Condrata. Thank you to all of you. Your support on my channel is so appreciated. And my new stylist, Lou Sneary, second fan, first spike, blooms for you. It's not as if Rapiculus Lelia blooms weren't hard enough to document photograph. <laughs> On top of that, when a spike does this, um, yeah, it makes it a little bit more difficult. Got two blooms on my Lelia Regentii. This is a first time bloomer, but not the first time that I see the blooms. This is the most poorly of the three Regentii that I have. It's the back part of one of the orchids that I got in a box and I propagated the back part and here we are. So I've never seen this specific piece bloom. Hoping to capture some nice photography of this specific spike because I want to say thank you so much to Vanessa Van Pelt and Ron Hill for your support on my channel with my first time blooming Lelia Regentii. It's not a 2.0, it's not a 3.0. If anything, she is part of the OG but she is blooming for the first time. The other piece had already bloomed for me. Totally, totally cute. Just a little bit whack in her presentation. I'm so sorry about that. However, as I mentioned, finally the orchid seems to be picking up. I was extremely concerned for the longest time. Here is the growth that is blooming. And then you can see all the old pseudobulbs in the back here that were giving me pause for concern. But here we have another lead that is also growing a beautiful growth probably won't bloom, judging by the size, lack thereof. But still, this is great, great progress. Now I gotta make sure that I put the orchid back where she belongs <laughs> and that she can stay in focus. And thankfully we only have a light breeze going today because you can see how difficult it is to capture these blooms, keep them in focus even with a little bit of breeze going. Oh my goodness. The challenge is on. Do you mind? Can you? Thank you. All right. <laughs> so thank you so much, Vanessa Van Pelt, Ron Hill, for your support on my channel, my first time blooming Lelia Regentii. She blooms for you. I so appreciate your support. Thank you ever, ever so much. Nitawal, you're up. Hope that you one day see this video and if by chance you don't, one day I will find you, give you the link and tell you where there's something tucked inside there for you because I want to say thank you to you as well for your support on my channel. Podangis Dactyloceras has finally opened its fourth spike. 
right here. And she is now in full bloom. Absolutely insane. Not because she's a big orchid, but because of how delicate her blooms are. I would have thought she would have frazzled by now and I would never be able to show this orchid with her four spikes, full bloom, still looking fresh and beautiful. I may have mentioned in other videos <laughs> that my patio was exposed to a lot of wind as in gale force winds. And when you look at the blooms, you would think, yeah, they are not gonna make it. They're going to be burnt to a crisp, even though she is in full shade currently in my blooming alley. These blooms being so delicate, having a transparent characteristic to them, tiny, tiny little structures, you would actually think they are just not made for what I was hit with, especially seeing as she also comes from Kenya. And in Kenya, we have humidity from 80% on up all year round. And I don't have that here in southern Spain. So yeah, that was a bit concerning. But my goodness, what a trooper. What a fighter. What a beauty. Not only is the first spike still looking amazing, but the second and third spike are still looking amazing. And then put on top of that the fourth spike. This little orchid just warms my heart. I have seen bigger, robuster, more sturdier orchids in bloom. And those blooms would frazzle within 24 hours based on what we were up against recently. I do have a little bit of dehydration on the leaves. Hardly surprising considering the circumstances and being in full bloom. But I don't think it is to the detriment of the orchid. It's just that there is not enough humidity around. So I'm trying to keep her happy by misting the lava rock that she is in on a regular basis. So Nitaval! my Podangas dactyloceras, she blooms for you. One Kenyan using an orchid that grows in Kenya to say thank you to you for your support on my channel. Know that you are so appreciated and I really hope you're doing well in your part of the world. I have a single Cattleya durigan and I don't know why I only have one. And that rhymes. <laughs> Mine is the Cusero do Sul. She has four blooms, even though we just see three, but four blooms, and she is blooming for Munchkin Kitty, Family Pessoa, Danilo Valera, and Death by Killerbong. Thank you to the four of you so very, very much for your support on my channel. As I mentioned, this is Catlia Durigan Crucero do Sul. There are so many other Durigans out there, and I was always hoping to find one that has got Capricorn in it or is a Leo or a Virgo, but I haven't found those. Poseidon sounds nice, but anyway, my Crucero do Sul is blooming for the second time for me in my collection, but the first time with four blooms. And yes, she does have this glow effect. There's no filter on these blooms at the moment. It's a little bit of an overcast day, even though one wouldn't think so, but it is. And it's an extremely windy day. So these blooms have been open about five days, but because I've got such dry air with the warm wind, I'm a little concerned that my waxy blooms are going to deteriorate, dehydrate, seeing as there's nothing to buffer them against what force of nature is throwing at them. She is very protected in my blooming alley, but still, I would have loved to have had her outside in the sun to show you what she can do. I even tried to take some pictures out where there was a little bit more light, but it is so breezy, I was scared she was gonna fall over. Here on the east side, we're a little bit more protected, well, we can have a little closer look at the blooms. But first of all, a little update. The orchid herself, you can see that my radical acclimating process, when it comes to how much light can an orchid tolerate, well, she can tolerate a lot of light, but please, no direct sun. Made it very, very clear. But what she did tolerate was my winter and my horrendous spring. She came through that with flying colors. Scale tried to get at her. They were not successful. And for a bifoliate, she is not showing me any kind of diva tendencies, but I've got really sticky fingers because <laughs> I was touching the spike earlier on to get the blooms beautifully presented. And I thought, no, that's not gonna work. There's so much happy sap on her, it's incredible. The spotting against the weird background of the petals and sepals makes these blooms kind of jump out. Yes, they're three-dimensional, but this effect gives the whole bloom some kind of a hologram effect. It's almost like you can see through her, and if you get too close, the spots will jump out at you. 
Taking close-up images of her is a lot of fun, but I also feel that the closer you get to these blooms, you lose a lot of the effective beauty of them. So I don't have that many stills from her really, really close up because it's the whole bloom that actually makes the entire show. Some blooms are very, very striking the closer you get, this bloom is super striking simply by staying away and looking at it from afar. Now, her fragrance is very, very beautiful. She reminds me of a bouquet of roses. She does not project her fragrance though. So you have to get close to the blooms to appreciate them. You don't have to stick your nose right up against them, but you have to be pretty close. And I'm about a meter away from her and I cannot smell her fragrance. When I was taking the pictures, I could smell the fragrance. Very strong semblance to a bouquet of roses. I'm anticipating these blooms to last another two weeks. If this wind continues, that's gonna shorten the lifespan of my blooms considerably. And if I get another week out of her under these conditions, I'm gonna be very, very lucky. But she is a reliable bloomer. She is a robust orchid and she's not that big either. She stays nicely in her pot behaves herself very very well which is always appreciated when it comes to bifoliate catlias. <laughs> so as a massive thank you for your support on my channel munchkin kitty family pessoa danilo valera death by killer bong my gorgeous gorgeous catlia durigan crucero do sul she blooms for you your support is so very much appreciated thank you and i hope you're all doing well in your part of the world If this Chao Praia grows any taller, <laughs> we're gonna have some difficulties. The next spike of my Vanda Chao Praia to bloom, if it's gonna be way up there, is gonna be rather difficult to film. <laughs> we are in the lofty heights of the west side of my patio with a spike that is blooming from where I cannot believe that it's blooming, but we'll get to that. First of all, thank you to Suiwan IP, Sammy, D. Maxwell, Sonia Margocia, and Kirsten Haust for your support of my channel, my Vanda Chao Praia. Surprise, Spike! <laughs> blooms for you with five blooms in total. So let me uh, try <laughs> and fandangle without losing the camera to show you why I am so surprised and where the spike is coming from. That is where the first or second crack was. This entire orchid has two cracks in it, but the crown is continuing to grow despite there not being any kind of root system or anything down here. But I've tried to pat it a little bit to add more humidity in the area of the crack, even though it was still continuing to grow. And that is the top right there. <laughs> Trying to go slowly because this is a seesaw shot. <laughs> growing super well. I mean, yes, I have a little bit of sunburn over there, but that whole area is looking lush. It's looking green and hydrated. I don't know how it's sustaining itself because I have checked the bandaging, but there are no roots in there. So somehow she is getting something around the crack. Something is still well attached. <laughs> Whatever, I was not expecting her to bloom this year at all because further down, there's two offshoots that grew just below where the second crack in the main stem is. And well, they are not mature enough to bloom yet, but they are growing superbly as well. They do have their own roots as well. So this is a massive happy surprise. And I can tell you that I've got my sugary blueberry fragrance back, powder blueberry. And I always liken that fragrance to those little bracelets that were on an elastic band that we had as children back in the day with lots of little pastel colors. And there was like a lavender blue color. And for me, that used to taste of, you know, artificial blueberries, but still the fragrance of that is what this orchid has. It's amazing. And let me tell you, she is not shy with her fragrance. I sit about 10 meters away from her when I'm working with the door open and I can smell her from where I am sat. She doesn't need sun to be super, super fragrant. She is delicious and not just delicious to smell, but to look at as well. 
very, very happy that the two accidents I had when she got blown over, oh my, I heard the cracks when I was on the other side of the patio, not just the clang of the stand that she finds herself on, but I heard the crack of the main stem and I was just heartbroken. Not just the first time and when it happened again, oh, yeah. I thought my orchid was history. She did not blow over during the five, six days of incredible wind forces that we had on the patio because I tied her to the fence. <laughs> I was not having it this time. Considering she is hanging on a wrought iron plant stand, which is supposed to hold pots, it doesn't, clearly, <laughs> which is super heavy, I can tell you. My little mini tornadoes that seem to find my patio, they are quite the scary and strong business. Still, here she is, blooming beautifully, smelling gorgeously, deliciously of sugary blueberry candy, and doing this for Suivan IP, Sammy D. Maxwell, Sonia Marcocha, and Kirsten House as a thank you to all of you so, so much for your support on my channel. You are so appreciated. I normally like to mix things up a little bit, give another viewpoint of the blooms before I say goodbye. Thank you for watching. But my goodness, when I looked at the light again, I thought, nah, this is a worthy shot and I hope it doesn't bore you. And if it does, let me know in the comments and I will make sure that next time there will be more variety. At this point in time, I want to say one more time, thank you so very much for watching. You are appreciated. If you are a private account, know that includes you. If you've never commented before, now's your chance. Please leave me a comment. Give me a new name that I can transfer onto my list and then be on the lookout for a Blooms For You episode where your name will come up tagged with a bloom. Thank you everybody for being here. I am going to now wish you a fabulous day, but I do attach a condition to that. Please, please stay safe. Take care, bye.